Just like a diamond is created under pressure, I became a conscious leader through all the major challenges I overcame in my life. I was born in Montreal from blue collar parents, very hardworking parents. My mother was a factory worker. All her career, she filled boxes with beauty products. And she had a dream to take care of her grandkids. But she never got to that because she died at 52 when I was 25 of cancer because she was bad lucky. She was born across the street from an asbestos mine. And this was quite traumatic for me as a young man because she also had lost both her parents before she was nine and was raised by her sister. So I couldn't understand while all this bad luck was happening to her. And what shocked me most is when she got cancer and she had to leave work, her company, which was a major international company, tried to scam her in her benefits. They tried to give her a lump sum to try to reduce their costs instead of giving her the benefits that she was entitled to. And I was a young person, but I couldn't understand how a big company could do such a thing to protect their profits and really not care for an employee that served them so well for so long. My dad was a truck driver. He learned to drive a truck when he was 13. You know, he quit school at that time. And all his life, he drove a truck. He was very dedicated, very hard worker. And after 15 years of working for the same company, driving a truck every day, six days a week, he lost his job and he lost his pension fund because the owner chose to file bankruptcy. My dad lost everything and I was shocked to see how depressed he was. And I was wondering, even though I was very young, what's gonna happen to us? And what was even more shocking for us is to see that the owner of the company started a new company only a few weeks later under a new name. It, it looked like he was trying to, to, again, scam his employees from all the benefits that had contributed to basically fill his pockets. You know, I don't know the true story, but I was young and that's the way I felt it. And, you know, I started to have doubts about business at that time. So I chose to become an engineer. I chose to get my MBA because I was really ambitious when I was young. And when I graduated from MBA in 1995, like all my classmates, I wanted two things. I wanted to be CEO and I wanted to be a millionaire. This is a long time ago. Some of the young people today can't even understand that. But nobody in that age wanted to change the world. It was always about making more money, getting benefits, getting uh, you know, material goods, and you know, showing our success. So I went on to work for a very large uh, international manufacturing company. Started at 25 as a young program manager, and I, I left the company at 47. And throughout my career, I worked really, really hard. I always chose the toughest assignments. Assignments where no one, no one wanted to take him. Why did I do that? Because I knew that I could learn from all that. And yes, I faced failures many, many times. And I finally overcame failure through hard work, resilience, perseverance. But I certainly became a transformation leader. And at 42, I was asked to become a VP. And I was so thrilled by that. But then I asked myself, how will I survive this assignment? Because this job that I accepted to take, the business unit was losing 50 million a year. It was a very large business unit building luxury products for the, wealthy, the wealthiest people around the world and also CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. And they had, they had lost a quarter of a billion in 10 years. And before me, nine VPs had been fired. The only guy that didn't get fired is the person that promoted me. So I said, how am I gonna achieve all that? And you know, true transformation leadership, I really developed my skills at that time. We transformed the business. In only 22 months, we turned it around. We were making 50 million a year. So a swing of 100 million in only 22 months. Employee engagement increased from 65 to 78%. Non-quality reduced by 50%. Health and safety accidents reduced by 50%. And the best of all, customer loyalty. We went from number eight in the marketplace to number two in only 22 months. And people ask me, what did you do? I said, what did I do? Yes, I had a vision. Yes, I was very good operationally. But the thing I really did better than anyone else, I loved people. I helped remove fear from the organization. Because you know, an organization that loses that much money, everyone in it feels like a loser. And I made sure my team felt like winners. And you know, we enrolled the employees, catalyzed everyone's full potential, and we completely turned around the business. So I was able to go on and to do uh, two more major transformation at that company. And then something happened to me. In September 2014, I was called into my president's office at 8 a.m. and I knew something was fishy because he asked me to go into his conference room, not his office like I always did. And then the VP of HR was there, which was actually a friend of mine. 
And then both of them gave me an envelope and they said, Stefan, that's it, you have to leave. Here's your package. You know, I try to ask questions and obviously in such a case, nobody wants to give you answers. So I left at 8.15 with no badge, no cell phone, and my 23K year was over. I felt like a complete failure. I didn't understand the gift that I was given at the time. You know why it was a gift? Because a few months before, I had written my vision. My vision for 2024, 10 years down the road. And what came out of my consciousness is I wanted to be a CEO. The CEO of my own global company, catalyzing transformation, helping leaders transform themselves, transform their businesses, and rise to their full potential by allowing their employees to thrive. I wanted to be a published author, I wanted to be a coach, I wanted to be a speaker. But you know, when I was fired, I didn't have the courage to do that. I said to myself, who am I to think I can be an entrepreneur? This even if I managed the day before a revenue, a business unit with revenues of $2.5 billion. So I went on to do another VP job. I was hired by an ex-colleague to run operations for North America for a very large international company. And in 15 months, I led another major transformation. I was so proud of my team. We achieved breakthrough results, true, true transformation, leadership. And today I call this conscious leadership because what we did is we created a vision, we connected with people, we inspired them, and then we managed the business turnaround. And something happened to me again. My boss hired a new president for our group in North America. And after a few weeks, this man told me, you know, Stefan, all this transformation work you keep talking about, I think it's complete bullshit. I don't think it matters because the only thing that matters is numbers. I said, really? Tell me more about that. He says, I don't care about all this people stuff. You know, what I care about is lean numbers, hardcore numbers. And I could see that this man was really stuck in his head. He had not made a journey to his heart. And I could feel that something was fishy between him and I. And obviously a few weeks later, he again asked me to leave the organization. This was another perfect gift, but it took me many months to finally seize the gift and to gain the courage. And I finally gained the courage in early March 2017. I created an organization, my own organization, in which a lot of people have joined around the world, which is to raise consciousness. The organization is called the International Center for Conscious Leadership because our mission is to be a catalyst for leaders' transformation so they can go on and transform their own organization and create a world that thrives. So we do this through the rise of consciousness because I've discovered more than 10 years ago now that a conscious leader is the leader that cares for people, is the leader that creates environments where people can thrive and allows them to really rise to their full potential. And this is the only way long-term to create breakthrough results, to achieve what clients want from us as an organization and to care for all the stakeholders. So yes, I was not born a conscious leader, but right now, this is my claim. This is my quest. I stand for the greatness of all leaders around the world, and I'm deeply committed with all my team and all the people that follow us around the world to create a world that thrives to the rise of consciousness.